Hey everybody, Ben here from the Bono Podcast and welcome to Special Teams Sunday. Every week we get together and we have a look at some of the best unofficial teams in Blood Bowl. Now there's a ton of teams available in Blood Bowl right now. 29 all in from Games Workshop with the two additional NAV teams. But that is just the tip of the iceberg. Blood Bowl's a great game. It's a great board game. What can you do? Homebrew your own rules. People who've been playing Games Workshop games have been doing this for millions and millions of years. Dinosaurs had their own Blood Bowl teams, and we're going to look at some of these today. So the Fumble Secret League, Fumble is an online version of Blood Bowl. It does run the old rules, okay? This is pre-snap Blood Bowl. This is 2016. But you can go on and play these teams right now, which I think is really cool. It looks old school, and I love it. It's very, you know... Game Boy Color kind of stuff, and that for me, I'm, that's my era. Anyway, Fumble is a great way to play games online, but there is a secret league in there that has on the way to 100 teams that have had hundreds of matches played uh, with a team of people that work together to create these guys and make these teams balanced-ish and just do great things. Now, we've had a look at a couple of different vampire teams so far. We had Blood Dragons and Strigoi, okay. Now, Von Karstein is another one of the key bloodlines from Warhammer Fantasy Battle 6th Edition. Yes, I may have fallen in love with this series of teams because they remind me of what I used to play. That Vampire Counts, P the Vampire Counts rulebook, PDF, I think we have the PDF, was so good. And in Vampire Land, there were bloodlines, okay, that had uh, very typified, like archetypical traits of these guys. We had the Strigoi, which were bestial. We had the Blood Knights, which were like the knights. They were combatty. They were full plate armor. This is what they did. There was the Lamians, which were the kind of seductive ones. There was the Necrarchs, which were the wizards. And then there were the Von Karsteins, who were the best, the most pure of vampires. Now, the cool thing about the roster that we're going to look at today is that the Von Karstein roster is probably what the Blood Bowl roster should be for vampires. They are vampires, but better, and with a little bit of cool stuff added as well. And I love it, and we're going to have a look at it right now. So the roster here is Thralls, Spirit Hosts, and Von Karstein Vampires. Now the Thralls you will be familiar with. Okay, the Thralls are there as 40k, basically humans with worse armor, who have to be bitten by players with bloodlust. So like I said, this is 2016 Blood Bowl rules. So the Vampires have bloodlust, which means when they activate, they roll a dice. On a 1, they get peckish, and at the end of their activation, they have to be standing next door to a player with Thrall so they can bite that player. If they don't end up next to a player with Thrall, they run off into the crowd looking for snacks. That's okay. In the new edition of Blood Bowl 2020, these guys have got animal savagery, which basically means they lose their stuff and just attack somebody who's standing next to them. We'll have to see what these rules look like when they go fully into Blood Bowl 2020. Basically, when Fumble gets updated to 2020 rules, which I believe they're pretty close to, these rosters can start being played out and just get tailored. So we're looking at the old school rules now because they've got hundreds of matches. I don't want to present to you the Blood Bowl 2020 versions if they're not play tested as well as they could be. Now, this team also has Spirit Hosts. So this is a great addition to this team. So the Von Karsteins were top vampires. They were combatty, they were agile, and they were spellcasty. Now the whole thing here is that it's an undead vibe. So there's no zombies, there's no ghouls, but what you do have are ghosts. And if you kill a guy with this team, you will get a spirit host. So it's like um, rotters. You get a rotter back if you've got Nurgle's rot. It's like raising a zombie if you've got a necromantic team. But this team gets back spirit hosts. You can't buy them. There's no way to get them except to kill players, which is really cool. So if you're lining up against a Von Karstein team that's got two or three spirit hosts, you should probably be a little bit worried. Um, 70k rerolls is pretty standard for vampires so it is pricey and those rerolls become so important to get over the bloodlust unless your players have a slightly different way of getting around it now we're going to look at that in just a moment our thralls are here to do thrall things they're 40k movement 6 strength 3 armor 8 no armor 7 and they've got thrall with edge 3 these guys are actually underrated they can get on and do whatever you need them to do all right movement 6 is great strength 3 is great armor 7 is a little bit low but edge 3 means they are going to be able to pick up the ball they're going to be able to move they're going to be able to dodge when you really need them to and they're going to be able to punch when you need them to as well no skills does hurt them a bit but over time they've got general access so you can get one with sure hands you can get one with block and they can start filling out those roles They've got Thrall, so realistically they're there to get bitten by the vampires, but 
I'm sure you've played against or heard rumours of a team that has just thralls or just hobgoblins. It's the same thing. This stat line is just fine. And at 40k, it's plenty cheap enough for you to be able to afford other stuff. But they're here to man the line and to just be fed to your vampires. But I guess the thralls can also kill things. And when you do kill things, you get spirit hosts back. So they have a, a nominal value of 60k a piece. You can't buy them. You can only buy them by spending the souls of deceased opponents. Uh, players not do not kill other bubble players you will not get a ghost on your team you might get haunted and arrested so general and agility access for spirit hosts means that they can develop into very cool players movement six strength three edge five i know you're licking your lips right now armor seven no hands okay which makes sense for ghosts they can't handle the ball but they can be there to distract your opponent and then punch them edge five means that they are flying around and because they have the titchy skill they are flying around basically uninhibited uh, what what's gonna what's gonna trip them up? Uh, prehensile tail is gonna reduce their ability to dodge away, but most of the time they're dodging on a one plus, so prehensile tail is gonna be a two plus. No dodge on these guys, so you always have that cheeky risky one. But hey, what are you gonna do? They also have foul appearance, so if your opponent wants to punch them, they're gonna have to roll a two plus. It's gonna it's man. It, we've talked through the ethereal team before, and if you've seen season two of Seven Super Series, you know that foul appearance can really be a nuisance. Or uh, well, there's also the neck, the Nurgle team, I guess. Um, so you probably have played against that. Foul appearance, no hands, Titchy, and regeneration. They're gonna regenerate their way back in, but that edge five means they can move around and give you assists wherever possible. They can't carry the ball, so there's gonna be no massive shenanigans here, and I really like that as a balancing piece. But if you can get these guys to have some casualties over time, maybe a cheeky MVP or so, getting them block, getting them dodge is going to be really useful. And if you can roll a cheeky double, having an edge five touchy piece, a uh, titchy piece with guard is going to be awesome for getting assists. On the other side, your vampires are already strength four, so they're not often going to need them. But the spirit host, it's a cool idea. It's thematic. I love ghost players. The no hands makes it fair great design and then we've got the von Karsteins. so movement six strength four edge four armor eight bloodlust hypnotic gaze regeneration and pro so these guys are landing at 120k so 10k more for pro now pro in the bubble 2016 rule set works on a four plus on a four plus basically you get a re-roll for whatever you're doing Works slightly differently in 2020. Now it triggers on a 3+, plus, but you can only reroll one dice from your dice pool. So, old school rules. These rules as they are now. This guy wanders up, has a punch, doesn't like it. On a 4+, plus, he gets to reroll it for free. So, it gonna, it's going to make them really consistent when they're doing stuff, okay? And you're edge 4, so you're going to be picking up the ball on a 4+, plus. you're going to be dodging on a... Sorry, you can pick up the ball on a 2+, plus. you're going to be dodging on a 2+. Plus. And having that back... If you run out of team rerolls, you can try that Pro 4 Plus to just get you over the hump. But realistically, what Pro is there to do is to reduce your bloodlust failures by half. Alright, so if we assume that bloodlust triggers one in every six turns and a standard game of Blood Bowl is 16, so we'll say that three times a game you're going to trigger on bloodlust. If you've got Pro, that's going to be cut in half. So you may only fail one or two bloodlusts a game with each of your vampires because of Pro. Let's say you've got two vampires and it's going to trigger once every six turns. So yeah, you're going to be looking at four or five bloodlusts a game. This is going to drop it to two. All right, this is going to make your team so much more reliable. Pro is a fantastic skill for vampires it has always been really highly rated as one of the first skills to take on your vampires because it helps keep them activating correctly it's a four plus save against bloodlust going wrong and the great thing about bloodlust is you only have to end your activation next to a biteable player in the new edition this pro animal savagery potential is going to be really good for you but for now this is just fine it's a slight tweak on vampires but it makes them so much more reliable it makes them 50 percent more reliable for 10k absolute bargain that means you can actually focus on taking the skills you want to do i want dodge first do i want block first do i want mighty blow first you can start building your vampires in your own ways without having to wait for two touchdowns to take pro just so you can start doing things this gives you a kickstart it has a greater cost but it's just much better it's so much more fun you can take block mighty blow frenzy dodge leap you can do stuff with vampires and start making them star players even earlier rather than taking the sensible one 
I love it. I think it's a small tweak, but this team is going to perform at a better standard. Now, these guys are capped at four, not six as normal, so they are, their, their ceiling is limited. But it's beneficial because they're going to do more stuff more often, and I think that's only great for the players. And that's why I recommend starting with all four Von Karsteins. So this roster comes in at 990. Seven Muggles, four Vampires, and three Rerolls. Historically with Vampires, we've looked at like the 4-4 build because you need those rerolls. But actually, three rerolls here when you've got four of your players with Pro is going to be great. This team is going to land and you are going to feel like Vampire Lords. Okay, you've got four Strength 4, Edge 4 pieces that are going to activate and do what you want them to do most of the time. But every now and again, they're going to fail. And every now and again, you're going to have to burn that reroll. And because the price increases more, your team rerolls are less. And it's a great balancing point here. Normally, you'd be running 4-4 four, four, and you'd be burning those rerolls on Bloodlust. Bloodlust. Not going to be the case here. You're going to be able to use those rerolls to go and do stuff. And if you use them to go and do stuff, when your bloodlust fails and you risk it with pro and you fail it with pro, what the heck do you do then? You've got that vampire thing. But the whole point here is that the Von Karsteins are more disciplined. They've got that edge, but they are more expensive. So as your team develops, it's going to cost you more to get those rerolls. And all it does here is take a couple of thralls to be out and you're going to be down on players but you're going to be able to play. And that's the downside of Vampire slash Squig teams is when you start losing players, you lose the ability to even play the game and it snowballs and it is hilarious and it's a really fun story, but it's a more fun story if you get to fight that game and you play with loss and you get to play into your strengths, which is having mostly reliable awesome players so models for this team this is the other very cool thing about the von karstein roster is you probably don't need to do anything special this is the punga uh, vampire team it's potentially the best vampire team out there these vampires are vampire -y. they're lordy they've got bicorn tricorn hats okay they're good to go. This roster is good to go. The only thing you'll need is when you start killing your opponents, picking up a couple of spirit hosts. And realistically, all you have to do then is take a spare model and paint it with ghost paint. That is it. You have got your ghost and as your team develops, you're going to get a couple of those guys. You're going to have those four vampires. Any vampire models will do. So you can pick up a vampire team and just run it as a Von Karstein team immediately. It's a different way to play vampires. It's going to feel better. It's going to be more expensive, but it's going to feel better. It's going to give you a better play experience. And they're more potent. They're definitely to be feared. The other thing you can do is pick up uh, the Underworlds team, the Warhammer Underworlds team for the vampires guys uh, three of them really cool models one of them standing there holding a pole so a bit more difficult to convert but you can do it this is it now you need a bunch of dudes at strength three and you need four vampires and in the long run you're going to need some ghosts as well it's a cool mini modeling project if you've got a vampire team you're ready to go right now with this roster now i really like it it's cool it's a great tweak that cost is going to be balanced it's a bargain it is strictly better vampires essentially it's a bit sad you can't buy spirit hosts but hey earning them i think is really cool element as well so i love this roster i want to see vampires in the future go this way have something more about them and this von karstein roster it's going to lure you into thinking this is vampires without the downside but that downside is going to be there three or four times a game and you still have to play around it it just means you're going to have to you don't have to waste those first that first skill. You don't have to waste your first four games just getting to the point where your team becomes playable. It's playable right now. You can just start building a vampire legacy, and I think it's fantastic. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think of this team. I know it's just strictly better vampires, but quite frankly, I think vampires could do with being just a tad strictly better. And uh, yeah, I'm going to disappear. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back soon with more Blood Bowl content. Happy biting. Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you want to support the show even further, please like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Or come and join us in our Patreon, uh, link below, where you get early access to our content and monthly competitions. See you later.